Stay all day. You are now tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, we're not done. You need a huge dose of personal initiative. Dre, what is that? That's the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques, all underneath the umbrella of one unifying philosophy that is called Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is what gets measured gets done. And I will lay this out in detail as usual in a moment but before i get started i mean remind everybody i have a daily motivation text message that i send out free of charge every single morning to everyone who's in my text community if you would like to receive that message and why would you not want to get that message text me at this number right now 305-384-6894 and every day when i send that message out you shall receive starting tomorrow morning also i want you to text me while you're listening to this episode tell me the best insight that you got from today's class secondly the next step in you taking going to the next level in your game with me is by going to work on your game university that's at work on your game university.com that's where you get access to number one my coaching programs number two all of the courses that we have in the university we have 20 plus courses including bulletproof mindset business builder next mission the transitioning course selling yourself course all of that's inside the university and I send out two physical mailings every month, the Bulletproof Bulletin, which you can see back here over my shoulder, also the Masterclass Black Book. Every month, two of those to your physical doorstep. Only members of the university get all of this stuff, so go to workonyourgameuniversity.com and you can get started. Now let's get into the topic. What gets measured gets done. Now, this episode is about being more strategic and deliberate in and professional in what you are doing, whether we are talking about your work situation or your life outcomes, that you hope, wish, and hope and wish for, and you talk about. You want to get more things done, and you want to be strategic about getting things done, and more deliberate about getting things done, and you want to better ensure that things get done. Then, what you need to do is what I'm going to lay out here in today's master class. You got it. Point number one. The topic again is what gets measured gets done. I did an episode on knowing your numbers not too long ago. That was episode number. 2446 know your numbers and that is not just limited to business about a month ago I did that episode if you have not listened to that make sure you do the reason why knowing your numbers matters so much in business and in everything else in life as well is because when we know our numbers that means we are tracking what we are doing and there's a, a phrase two words that I use often when I talk about creating uh, sustained success in life are the words conscious and intentional. If you want to create success, you need to be conscious about it, meaning you don't just hope that it happens, but you are consciously thinking about it and you are intentional about it, meaning you are doing these things on purpose. I told you, I did an episode on this very show where I told you that success only happens on purpose. That was episode 864. You need to be conscious and intentional about creating success. And one way to be conscious and intentional is not to hope that you'll remember to think about something that's the amateur way of doing it the professional way is to track what you are doing so for example if you're trying to lose weight which person has a better chance of actually losing the weight let's say two people are both trying to lose the same amount of weight and they're the same weight right now who has a better chance of losing weight the person who is tracking their weight and they're getting on the scale consistently they're measuring their, they're looking at maybe their BMI, they're measuring their macros, they see how much, what they're taking in of each thing, they're tracking how much sleep they're getting, they're tracking their workouts and everything. Or the person who is just telling themselves, hey, I know I'm gonna get in shape and I wanna lose weight this year, but they're not tracking anything. Which person has a better chance of actually losing weight? Which person would you bet money on? If you had to bet money on one of them, which one would you bet on actually achieving the outcome? Without knowing anything else, everything else being equal, which person has a better chance of achieving the outcome? Almost all of you would say the first person, the person who is tracking everything and paying attention to everything. Why is this? Because we know that attention and focus are two of the five forms of investment. When you are giving attention and focus to something, you have a better chance of achieving your desired outcome than when you are not giving attention and focus to it. Would everybody agree? I hope you do, because that is 100% true. When we know our numbers, we are paying attention. We're conscious, we're intentional, we are paying attention, and usually when we pay attention to something, that, gives, that makes us eligible to get focused on it. 
Now, just because you're paying attention does not mean you're focused, but if you're not paying attention, you can't be focused. The human brain is designed such that when we are tracking things and we are paying attention consciously to what's happening and we know exactly what's going on, we are much more likely to achieve our desired outcomes as opposed to when we are simply hoping and wishing and guessing and eyeballing what's happening. That's why you need to know what's going on. The biggest mistake that you see if you've ever watched the TV show Shark Tank is what? When people come into the tank and they don't know their numbers. They, they went through all of that stuff to get the, their opportunity on the show and then they don't know the numbers of their own business, which tells you what? It's tipping you off and I just told you. That means this person, these people, whoever that entrepreneur or entrepreneurs are who came on Shark Tank, they are not focused in what they're doing in their business. They're not being as conscious and intentional as they need to be about their business. And listen, their business may even be making money. But if you're trying to sell your business to another person, what's another person going to want to know? They're going to want to know the details. They want to know the whole picture of what's going on. And if you don't know, that means you're not paying close enough attention. So why would somebody want to do business with that person? I mean, let me ask you a question. Would you want to do business with someone who's not paying close attention to what they're doing? Would you want to get involved with that individual? Probably not. And this is the biggest mistake that people make on that show. And it's the biggest mistake people make in life and in business is not paying close enough attention to what they are doing. Therefore, when things don't go the way they want them to go, they are dumbfounded as to why this is happening. And I just solved the problem for you. The reason it's happening is because you are not paying attention. You're not being conscious and intentional. And the way that you tip people off to let them know you're not being conscious and intentional is in the fact that you are not tracking. You are not watching your numbers. And what happens on Shark Tank, the sharks who are interested in investing in whatever business or might have been interested, they usually end up not doing anything. Why? Because they can't make an educated decision about what to do because they don't have the information. They don't have the necessary information. One thing you'll notice about that TV show, Shark Tank, is that the sharks usually ask the same set of questions about a business in order to determine whether or not they want to ask more questions. They usually they ask more detailed questions once they get the basic questions answered. All right, how much money has your business made? How long have you been in business? How much does it cost you to manufacture one of these widgets that you're selling? What's the, you know, how much are you spending in advertising and marketing? What are you gonna do with the money? You know, how much time do you spend working on this business? What have you done before? Those are pretty much the same questions. They ask every entrepreneur the same questions. Now, if you stumble on one of those questions, then they don't wanna know the rest of it. The entrepreneur, start, the shark starts saying, well, I'm out, I'm not interested. But if you can answer all those questions cleanly, then they go into the details of specifically what it is that you're offering. But if you watch the show, you know it's the same questions over and over again. Which means, if you get your opportunity to pitch your business in front of these people, you should pretty much have answers to those questions. You should be reciting those answers in your sleep. Why? Because you know they're gonna ask. So people have to have enough information to make an educated decision about you, and it is your job to supply them the information. It's not their job to get it, it's your job to give it to them. Is everybody with me? If you're making decisions about your business or your life or about anything that you're trying to do but you do not have the measurements to know exactly what's going on and why you are making such a decision meaning you're making your decision based off of what just blind faith or a gut feeling or you're making decisions based off of emotion rather than logic or actual facts you are more often than not set yourself up for failure i mean it i'm not saying that it was going to fail every time sometimes it might work if you have a good enough market good enough product good enough timing and you're talented enough you may make things work for you even if you are not doing things professionally and you're not doing things the right way. But over time, you do that often enough, more often than not, you're gonna lose. Point number two, today's topic once again is what gets measured gets done. Number two, my senior year internship at in college was in uh, Altoona, Pennsylvania. I went to school at Penn State Altoona. That's where I got my uh, college degree from. To get a business degree there, you had to do an internship. And this was like a 12 credit internship. So this this particular semester, I did mine the spring semester of my senior year. So this was the last semester of school. And I ended up doing an internship working side by side with this guy named Phil Sky, who was a big uh, business guy in Altoona, PA. He passed away a couple years ago. But uh, when I did the internship with him, I spent some time you know, just hanging around him and I remember once he had to go to like Maryland or something, some kind of business deal or something like that. And this was during the hours that I was you know, working for him. So I went with him driving down to Maryland and he was just telling me about you no know, business stuff. And I wish I knew 
than what I know now because I would have asked him a lot more questions than I asked him. I didn't really know what to ask him because I didn't know much about business, despite the fact that I was a few months away from having a business degree from a university. But one of the things that he talked about, he said that people do not do what you expect, they do what you inspect. And it was one of the best things that I got from that internship was the fact that he shared that uh, insight with me. And I, now I'm turning around and sharing it with you. And what he was explaining to me is the same thing that I'm telling you in today's master class. What is being measured is the thing that's gonna get done, not only for you with yourself, but also with other people. If you have other people working for you, they know that you are paying attention to what they're supposed to be doing when you are inspecting what they're doing. When you are measuring what's happening, they know that you know, and you know that you know, Therefore, they will be more on point because they know if they slip up or they don't do their job the way they're supposed to, they know that you're gonna check on it and then somebody's gonna be held accountable. There's a much better chance they get the job done when they know that you know than if they know that you don't know. So for example, there's an old uh, anecdote. Let's say uh, you, bake, you bake some cookies at home and your son, Johnny, he's six years old and he loves cookies and you know that Johnny might try to steal some cookies when he's not supposed to steal some cookies. And you need to go out to the mailbox to get the mail. So, and the only people in the house are you and Johnny. And you don't want those cookies to get stolen. So here's what you do. You call Johnny into the kitchen and you show Johnny the cookies and say, hey Johnny, look, I just baked these cookies. There are 12 cookies on this sheet. Let's count them together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 cookies on the sheet. You see 12 cookies, Johnny, right? Johnny says yes. And then you say, Johnny, look, I'm gonna go to the mailbox and I'm gonna check the mail. And when I come back, we're gonna count these cookies again. Now, the only people in the house, Johnny, are me and you. So if there are not 12 cookies here, when I get back, then there's only one suspect, and it's you, because you're the only person who will still be in the house. And if that happens, then your ass is grass. And if you, you and Johnny count the cookies together, then Johnny has no plausible deniability if one of those cookies happens to be missing. And there's a much better chance that Johnny doesn't steal one of the cookies if you know that he knows that you know exactly how many cookies there are and you know that you've held him accountable for how many there are and how many there better be when you get back from that mailbox. You get what I'm saying here? This is a, I'm giving you a very simple example to help you understand that this can apply in any aspect. But you gotta know what's going on. And when the people around you know that you know what's going on, they will be more cognizant of what's going on because they know they will be held accountable if something comes up short. So if something's not being measured, then people will slack off on the job. But when it is being measured, they won't slack off on the job. Donald Trump, back in his pre-political days, he was walking around one of his uh, Trump casinos and hotels. I don't know which one specifically, but he's walking around, he's got a, a team of people around him, he's got a little person with a clipboard, and every time Trump notices something that's off, he notes it to the person with the clipboard and they write it down and they, need, they know they need to go fix it. Now, those of you who don't know much about Trump, businessman Trump, I'm not talking about political Trump, but businessman Trump know that this guy was a stickler for details. And the Trump casinos and Trump hotels and his uh, buildings, condominiums, all these, these things were exquisite. Why? Because a guy like him was a stickler for details. This is the reason why they were exquisite, because this guy was very much into detail. He didn't like there being dust on something or something not being in the right place or uh, something being dirty, something not being done the way it was supposed to be done, a person not having their uniform on the right way, unshined shoes, all of that kind of stuff. He was very much into this stuff. So in this particular story, he's walking around one of his casinos and he goes into one of the bathrooms and the bathroom is trashed. There's water on the floor, there's toilet tissue on the floor, the place is just trash. It clearly has not been tended to the way that it's supposed to. Trump turns to the person with the clipboard and says, get this fixed now. The person with the clipboard goes running off to get it fixed. Trump leaves the bathroom, starts walking around to other parts of the building. He's looking at other stuff, other stuff, and he's supposed to be going in one direction, but he stops at one point, turns around, wheels around, goes right back to the bathroom same bathroom that had been trashed before he walks in the bathroom is still trashed it has not been tended to yet since he told that person to fix the bathroom now he turns to a different person with the clipboard and he says i thought i told you to get this fixed and the person with the clipboard says well mr trump it's only been 10 minutes since you said that and trump looks at that person and says well listen you have 10 minutes to go fire the person who was supposed to fix this and get it fixed. 
and he turns around, he walks out again. The whole point being, he was, and I guarantee you, the other people who worked there found out about that story. That that story didn't just stay with the, the person who got fired for not getting it fixed the first time and the person who got told to get it fixed the second time around. That story got around to everybody else there like, oh, this guy doesn't play. So when he says get something done, he means actually get it done, not maybe get it done, not think about getting it done, not I suggested get it done, but he meant get it done. The whole point being, uh, that story is going to travel through the great mind and let everybody know I'm paying attention, so you better be paying attention. Because if you're not, if you get caught not paying attention, something's going to happen to you. Everybody follow what I'm saying here? And any of you who's in a position of leadership or you plan on being in one, the people around you need to understand that you're on, you're at that level of on point. And you're that level of serious about when you tell people to get something done. Because if they think it's just a suggestion, they'll treat it like a suggestion. When people around you know you're checking their work and measuring it, it's much more likely that they get it done as opposed to when they know or they believe that you are trusting or hoping that they get things done, but not actually checking that they got things done. In the leadership world, we call it trust but verify. I trust that you're gonna do the job, but I'm gonna verify that you did the job. And if you, if I check to verify that you did the job and it's not done, then I'm gonna hold you accountable, up to and including firing your ass. People need to know that you'll do that, because if they don't think you'll do it, then they won't do the work. Why? Human beings are lazy. Uh, this is just what it is. You're lazy too. And this is why accountability matters so much. The more you are, you have a system in place to hold yourself accountable, the more likely it is you will follow through and go against your natural tendency to be lazy. All human beings are naturally lazy. Uh, that's why working on your game is outside of, this is, this goes against the grain. This is not what normal people do. Uh, that's why this show is not for everybody. All human beings, even the most disciplined amongst us, do better and more accurate work when we know we will be held accountable for said work. Point number three. Today's topic, once again, is what gets measured gets done. Number three, if you are not measuring your work and don't have clear objectives to know when something is done or how much of it has been done, how will you know when you're actually done? If you don't have a way of measuring what's being done and how much has been done, how will you know when the work is completed? And for uh, many of you, that this is a trick question because you don't have an answer. You won't know how much, you won't know when you're done. How will you know when you've reached a goal if you don't have a clear goal? Well, you won't know. And this is how people end up spending their entire lives working, literally working themselves to death, simply because they don't have goals. They don't have clearly defined outcomes. Their parameters are not clear. Therefore, they just keep doing stuff and hoping that one day they get to a finish line that they can't even see. They don't even know where it is. How will you know you've hit your target if you don't have a target? This is another example of why having things measured means getting things done. Because if you are not measuring the outcome, then there is no done. You can't cross a finish line if you have not clearly marked where the finish line is at. You'll just keep running and you don't know when to stop because there's no finish line. If you don't mark one, you can't be finished. You see what I'm saying here? So this is why, this is where strategy comes into play. So when I talk about strategy, this is one of the things that I'm talking about. How do you know when you are done? How do you know today? or whatever day you're listening to me, how will you know when you're done your work for today? Now, if you work at a job, maybe you're done your work when the clock strikes five o'clock and it's time for you to just clock out. If you run a business, how do you know when you're done your work for today? What needs to happen today for you to say, I completed my work today? What needs to happen? How would you know specifically you're done? If you can't answer the question, that's because you are not measuring what you're doing. You don't have a clear outcome. And that's going to lead to, often leads to burnout. It often leads to people just spinning their wheels, doing a whole bunch of stuff, a lot of effort, but no clear outcome. And this is how people get stuck. Let's recap today's class, which is what's getting measured, get, what gets measured gets done. This is about being more strategic and deliberate and professional in what you're doing, whether at work or in life. Number one, I talked about knowing your numbers. The reason this matters so much is because when we know our numbers, that means we are tracking what we're doing. It means we're paying attention. We are conscious and intentional. And listen, we take people more serious when they're conscious and intentional and paying attention to what they're doing rather than just talking about it. Number two, I did an internship in college and the guy I was interning with said, people do not do what you expect, they do what you inspect. When people know that you will inspect their work, they are much more likely to get it done. When you know that your work will be inspected by someone or something, you are more likely to get it done. Number three, if you are not measuring your work and don't have clear objectives to know when something is done or how much of it has been done, how will you actually know that you're done? How can you hit a goal if you don't have a clear goal? How can you hit a target if you can't 
clearly identify the target. How can you be finished if you don't know where the finish line is at? You can't, these are all trick questions. This is why you gotta start measuring what you are doing. This is a professional discipline. If you want some help with this, go to workonyourgameuniversity.com, get into my business builder course, get into my 30 days of discipline course, get into the work on your game system course. All of those are open to you as a member of the university. You get access to all of those courses, again, at workonyourgameuniversity.com. Text me, tell me the best insight you got from this class. My number is 305-384-6894. Work on your game. Dre, all day.